In the previous video, I defined the convergence of infinite series. I want to give three more examples of convergence in this video. First, I'll start with an alternating series. This is the sum of negative 1 to the n. So here I'm just adding positive and negative terms. 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1. Let me look at the partial sums. This series starts at n equals 0, so s0 is the first partial sum. Negative 1 to the 0 is positive 1, so the first sum is just 1. Then s1 is 1 plus the next term, and negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1, so this is 1 plus negative 1, which is 0. s2 is the first three terms, and remember the signs are going to alternate, so this is going to be 1 minus 1 plus 1, which is going to be 1. s3 is the first four terms, 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, which adds up to 0. s4 is the first five terms, 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, that adds up, adds up to 1. In this way I see a pattern. The odd partial sums are all going to be 0, and the even partial sums are all going to be 1. If I ask for a limit, this cannot work. I alternate between 0 and 1. Such behavior cannot approach any one number. Therefore this limit does not exist, and the infinite series is divergent. This is a good example of another way for an infinite series to fail. The series doesn't grow to infinity, the sums are all 0 or 1, it's entirely bounded. It just oscillates, and going to infinity, there's no way to decide which is the last oscillation. Series can diverge this way, by oscillating or by having other erratic behavior that makes putting a value on the series impossible. This series doesn't sum to anything, it can't, the limit doesn't exist. Here's a, here is a, sorry, here is a series which will demonstrate another interesting and novel technique. This series has terms 1 over n times n plus 1, starting at n equals 1. The partial sums Sn are the sums up to some index n, as usual, using k as the index for the partial sums. 1 over k k plus 1 is a rational function with two linear faction, fra factors in the denominator. Well, this means that partial fractions applies from a few weeks ago when we did integration of rational functions. And I told you this technique will return. This is a good example. In this case, the partial fraction process breaks up 1 over k k plus 1 into 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1. Knowing this, let me look at the partial sums. If I start at k equals 1, I get 1 minus 1 half. Then k equals 2, I get a half minus a third. Then k equals 3, I get a third minus a quarter, and so on. And now look at what happens to these terms. The negative 1 half and positive 1 half here cancel out. Likewise, the negative one-third and positive one-third cancel, the negative one-quarter and positive one-quarter cancel, and so forth and so on. Everything will cancel except for the very last term. So I can conclude that the partial sum is just 1 minus 1 over n plus 1, since all the middle terms have cancelled off. This is called a telescoping series. Any series where the middle term of the partial sums vanish can use this uh, name, can call itself a telescoping series. Well, since I know the general form of the partial sum, I can take the limit. In the limit, the 1 over n plus 1 goes to, in, to 0, dividing by large numbers produces smaller and smaller numbers. Therefore, the limit is just 1, and this converges, and indeed, all of these numbers add up to only 1. In the last example, I need a new definition. For any positive whole number n, the factorial of n, written n exclamation mark, is the product of all positive whole numbers up to n. So this is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, times so forth and so on, up to n. And it turns out this is a pretty useful bit of notation, since these types of products show up a lot in infinite series. 1 factorial is 1, which is pretty clear, 1 just by itself. However, 0 factorial is also defined to be 1, and this is a little bit mysterious, but do feel free to ask me in class for an explanation of why 0 factorial equals 1 is sensible. The factorial grows very quickly, unsurprisingly since it involves multiplying many things together. For example, 40 factorial is already a number some 46 digits long. Asymptotically, the factorial grows even faster than the exponential, and this is useful for determining limits involving the factorial. Now that I know this factorial, I can define this sum, the sum of the reciprocal of factorials. This starts at 0, which will work since 0 factorial equals 1, and let me look at the partial sums. 
S0 is 1, S1 is 1 plus 1, which is 2. S2 is 1 plus 1 plus 1 half, 1 over 2 factorial. That gives me 5 halves. S3 is 1 plus 1 plus 1 half plus 1 6, 1 over 3 factorial, which is 6. All of that adds up to 16 over 6. The next factorial is 4 factorial is 24, so the next term I'm going to add is 1 over 24, and S4 is going to add up to 61 over 24. And these sums don't immediately like they're, look like they're growing too fast. In fact, this sum does converge. I'm not going to prove it here, but it does. Moreover, this is yet another thing that works out to exactly the number e. Unlike the sequence limit from earlier this week, I'll actually prove this result in the next couple of weeks. And again, this could be taken as an alternative definition of the number e if you wish.